This podcast is intended for educational purposes only. For more information and our full disclosure, please visit ncmidwifery.com and our podcast page. Well, welcome back to another episode of More About Birth. We are actually on the road today. That's right. Sunnyside, Washington. Ladies, what's this about? You know, actually, this is Angie's thing today. I'm clueless, guys. So we are out of town today. This is really fun. I've met some new friends and we're going to learn some really incredible, incredibly good things today. In fact, we even have a new word that Angie hadn't even heard of. So (laughs) Angie, take it away. All right, guys. So today, one of the things we're going to be talking about is chirodontics. Chirodontics. No way. Another word by Angie. Yeah, chirodontics. It was even new to me. Um, And also the real pandemic of obstructive sleep apnea in children. And we have a lot of information to cover. We're going to try to hit all the good things, all the highlights in the short amount of time that we have. So bear with us while we while we wade through this. But we are super excited to bring this podcast, and I really hope that you'll stay tuned because you're going to hear about how chirodontics can help your labor. Um, are you how, sure? Yeah, uh-huh. for real. It's out there, but it's but it's real. Got it. Stay um, tuned. Yes. So please stay tuned because you know anything that can help your labor is a bonus, right? Um, the optimal development of your baby and any of your other kids. And uh, you definitely want to consider this whole program that we're going to present if you care about the foundational building blocks of your child's future and their their growth and development and their well-being. And Shannon, tell us the little hot topic that we're also going to touch on. Okay. I really wanted to throw this in because after talking to our new friend, Jim, we have discovered that he agrees with us about how bad it is for your kids to wear masks all the time. What? He's got some information for us having to do with the topic we're talking about today as far as um, oxygen intake and the effects on your body and your life in general and how your children wearing masks can be detrimental. Right. So, so you guys, here's a quick about that one. list of things that um, this whole program talks about and addresses. So one of the things is sleep apnea and just oxygen intake in general and how it affects your body. And so if you or your kids or anyone you know has struggled with any of these things, stay tuned because we're going to talk about it. And here's the list. Um, speech, learning, mood, brain fog, Growth and development, weight and height, yes, snoring, (laughs) depression, Uh headaches, sore throat, tooth decay, dry mouth, large tonsils or adenoids, thyroid function, and really the function of all of the organs in your body because they're all affected by oxygen intake. Mm -hmm. So that's our little intro. And now I am very happy to introduce to you our friend, and dentist and oral health medicine aficionado, Dr. Stevens. So thank you so much for joining us and having us come into your space today. And can you give us just a little um, background on yourself, how you got into this and what you've been doing with your life? Yeah, we've uh, been in dentistry here in Sunnyside for uh, about 45 years. Woo, long time. Yeah, one of the oldest guys in the state anymore. <laughs> and uh, we started doing the sleep apnea uh, airway probably 25 years ago or more. And it was a different animal then than it is today. Uh, yeah. The progression has been tremendous, and especially mm-hmm. in the last five years. A lot due to this group here, Vivos. Uh, started out with Dr. Dave Singh, who's a genius in genetics and an orthodontist came over from uh, London and uh, practiced here in the U.S. And he developed a uh, procedure called uh, epigenetics. Uh, He used the concept of epigenetics to develop an appliance that looks like this. And this is kind of an endpoint of uh, helping kids that have inadequate development. Uh, It looks like an orthodontic appliance. It's not. It's an orthopedic Clients. Okay. And so one of the concepts that we're talking about as 
both of you have expressed interest in chirodontics is orthopedics. Okay. So how does that affect uh, the topic of the day of young children, moms that are giving birth? Uh, the orthopedic aspect of this is that, as you mentioned, the pandemic in this country today is airway obstruction mm. of children, honestly. One of our Vivos doctors in New York is a pedodontist, and he said that 80% of his kids have obstructive sleep apnea in some form or another. 80%. That's huge. At what age starting? It's huge. Like, his practice is as young at, as... starts at age two. It starts at birth. Wow. Uh, wow. And if the child doesn't develop properly, if they're not nursing properly, and they're getting that little tongue up here and latching on properly, and... <laughs> That tongue is an incredibly powerful muscle. Yeah. When you do a cross section and look at those muscles anatomically, it's quite impressive. And so today, for you and you and anyone else, that tongue is still an orthopedic uh, appliance, more or less. It wow. has an orthopedic function. We use that a lot as we help adults. Mm -hmm. Can that you, have obstructive sleep apnea today. Can you explain to them what you said to us earlier when we were talking about how the palate, the roof of the mouth, um, the floor of the sinus cavities, how that's affected by the tongue? Sure. And as far as it flattening out during nursing or Right, and how tongue use? tie affects all that. So <clears throat> the tongue is an incredibly important a uh, piece of anatomy to development. And that tongue gets up and there. So here's this little baby that's essentially made out of clay. Mm -hmm. And it it's so malleable. And that tongue, if it's nursing, I mean, this is a marvelous system we have. Absolutely marvelous. It, if we allow it to function the way it's supposed mm -hmm. to. And that little tongue gets up there in the roof of the mouth with that sucking action. And pretty soon this little mouth starts to go like this and the palate develops this way. But if we're sucking on a, a, a bottle or we're not latching properly and this little baby's going, guess where the tongue is? The tongue's down here. Instead of the palate going like this, it forms like this. And the, the uh, palate is part of a bone called the maxilla, which doesn't make any difference, but just as easy to say <laughs> the upper jaw. And so there's the upper jaw. And it doesn't matter whether you're 60 years old or six months old. That's the upper jaw. Mm -hmm. And so there's the palate. It's all part of that. And there's that. There it is. And uh, so as we look at that, one of the interesting things you'll see about the, the palate and the roof of the mouth, it's also the floor of the sinus. Wow. Mm. Whoa. So if the palate expands, it's pretty easy. Once you look, you said, well, that makes sense. Makes sense, yeah. Mm -hmm. Why didn't I think of that? And so if we expand the palate, then this, the nasal cavity is going to expand as well. And so we're also going to be able to breathe more easily through our nose and nasal passages mm. as a result of the palate being the wow. correct dimension. So who would have thought orthodontics affecting the sinuses unless you'd used that? And I've never seen that. I'm 58 years old. Oh, oh I'm 59 years old. <laughs> Get it right. <laughs> Oops. So I thought of a quick question. I have so many questions. I'm going to have to squelch myself today. But <laughs> bottles. Some moms, they just have to end up bottle feeding. There are truly moms that have to. So the newer bottles that we have now with the very wide bases, are those much better than the the narrow base nipples then yes. for tongue and, and roof of the mouth development? Yes. Okay. So if, if you have to use something that's bad, Use the best of the bad. Okay. So the Makes wide sense. the wide base, most like a breast. Right. Okay. Right. And so and this is actually so as we talk about this, and this is the distinction that we specifically make in our airway analysis. This is oral medicine, actually not mm -hmm. dentistry. That's one distinction. Mm -hmm. And we our dentists that are providing this type of service, one of my roles as a clinical advisor to have 10 or 15 dentists that uh, respond to me mm -hmm. is that you're a doctor of the mouth 
and this is oral medicine, not dentistry. It's very different. And the, the presentation of it, the follow-up is very right. different. And, and the potential results or poor results are, are life-changing uh, to these patients. Wow. Mm. When you mentioned that it was similar to like chiropractic, therefore the, the new big word, and also that it's a little bit similar or like craniosacral. It is craniosacral. It, it's We're essentially that. Okay. We're, we call it craniomandibular. So mandibular is the lower jaw. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so we have the cranial part and the mandibular part is craniomandibular. And then you had also mentioned that this is a perfect complement for chiropractic care. We work hand in glove with chiropractors. And you said speech therapists? All kinds of healthcare providers. We call them myofunctional therapists. And these are uh, a budding group of uh, professionals that deal with uh, correct swallowing, correct mm -hmm. tongue position. Um, Correct breathing. Breathing is huge. We have. Uh, it's pretty whole, big. Well, we have whole <laughs> Sorry, now. Yeah, whole, it's pretty big. We, you got to do it. <laughs> yes, and it is, but but we don't breathe correctly, and so there's actually breathing classes, breathing instruction. Really, we refer our patients. Uh, person I'm using right now happens to be in Omak, Washington. This she's 200 miles away from here. Wow, and it's so important that the first appointment of the patient actually has to go there. Wow. Yeah. And so they may do a tongue oh. release. You talked about tongue tie. Tongue tie, yeah. So the tongue and the floor of the mouth should be able to function like this, and it's attached by a ligament in here. But sometimes that ligament's way out here, mm -hmm. and the tongue doesn't function properly. And so we have uh, release, and the, these tongue releases are, are easy, but uh, it, very important. There's new techniques out that are being used, mm -hmm. and it makes a tremendous difference in our ability to uh, get the optimal results from our treatment to get this palate to expand because we can get that tongue up where it's supposed to be to help us with the work it's so supposed to do. So which type of treatment do you prefer that, as far as the tongue tie releases? Um, the laser, the clip? The uh, there's a... Method now, uh, Dr. Zoggy in Southern California developed, uh, it's called the Zoggy technique, if you can imagine that. <laughs> Gee, imagine. <laughs> and, uh, and so that is, that's the rage today. The laser is okay. It depends on the element of the tongue tie. Mm -hmm. And also myofunctional therapy is very important towards maintaining that uh, release. Otherwise, it'll have a tendency right. to grow back. Right, right. And I've we don't want that, that to mm -hmm. happen. So that will grow back. And so having the myofunctional therapy before and then do the release and the myofunctional therapy after. And using right. the Zoggy technique is often the best way to go. Um, What's different about that the, technique? Well, the Zoggy technique, instead of just, instead of just clipping this front ligament, mm -hmm. The Zoggy technique uh, will uh, extend back into the, as the tongue is here, back more into the floor of the mouth and release some of the muscles that are causing the tongue to be uh, uh, retracted. Okay, oh, we'll have to look that up. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, we'll have to look that up. Okay, so I hope you guys are following along with this. Just to recap, um, now this is very crudely stated, I'm sure, but just <laughs> so just like to put the pieces together here. Um, so we have a lot of people, and particularly for our audience, a lot of kids running around with compromised airways. Mm -hmm. They're not getting the oxygen intake like they should be. And this is going to affect a whole range of things. The, the list that I mentioned, sleep apnea and oxygen intake, both of which affect um, your growth and development, your moods, the way you're able to learn and process information, um, you know, and, and all these different things. Tooth decay. I mean, who would have thought, right? But um, so the goal is to use the appliances. Maybe we should pull some of them out. And you fit these appliances specifically mm -hmm. custom to the person or the child. And over time, without pain, they spread 
the palate right? The upper palate. Am I getting this all right? They spread the upper palate and actually change the airway. And you've tried this yourself. Correct? Yeah, we're, we're doing this with our kids. And actually, if you guys stay with us till the end, there's going to be a little bonus segment. We're going to go back with Dr. Stevens to um, his office and the computer and his little, I call it the spacecraft, um, 3D X-ray machine. Angie's empty head picture. What? I don't know if it's actually me, <laughs> but um, we're actually going to see the way you can measure the airway and get a picture of it. That's amazing. And how it changes, and how you know, like pre-appliance and post-appliance. And so, um, once you're able to move that palate and open up that airway, you're able to correct some of these issues that otherwise actually just get worse over time. We need to quit yeah. having podcasts. Now I need to do Pilates. I, I need know, more chiropractic right. visits. Now I need this treatment. I know. Yeah, but we're, we're getting educated. We're getting educated. We're getting educated. So let's so, take right? a we're look at educated. some of these appliances and, and actually see what this process kind of looks like. So one, one of the things that you asked about is so how young mm -hmm. does this the, the kids develop this issue? Right. And uh, it's it's a progressive issue. Now, uh, our grandson was a year and a half old, and he suffered from sleep apnea. My son happens to be incredibly knowledgeable because he works for Vivos. I'm sorry, I have another question already, but people are going to be wanting to know, how do I know if my small child, like my one-year-old, has sleep apnea? Uh, do they snore? Are they breathing heavily? Uh do they have circles under their eyes? You got bags under your is eyes. Is bedwetting part of it? Bedwetting is definitely because they're not part waking up. Exactly. Well, and and they'll. Why are you looking at me? <laughs> because I'm thinking one of our children fit oh. all of these bills, and I will not. I just as long say, as it's not key. Just for the record, will. just for the record, I want everybody on <laughs> more about birth. I don't wet the bed. It's not Keith that wants the bed. I do snore, and I do have bags under my eyes. And what was the other <laughs> list? She's getting packed for a European trip with those bags. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So anyway, sorry, so, doctor. Is this the end of the confessional? <laughs> oh, yeah. my goodness. This is the end of the confessional. We always have too much fun. Just okay. Uh, so uh, our grandson was having these issues. He was actually on his knees in bed. It looked really cute. But this kid couldn't breathe. This was the this is like what I call the duck butt syndrome, right? Where yes. they're they're on their chest and it looks really cute, but oh, you're saying really? that's not a good way to sleep. The reason he's on his knees leaning forward is because when you do that, then the airway opens up. And that's the wow. only way he can get his airway open enough to breathe. Who knew, Sad. guys? Uh in adults, we'll see people walk around like this. Yeah. A large reason for that mm. is that opens up their airway. Wow. This is a real indication. Wow. Kind of like that, that head thrust forward thing. Yes, or exactly. bad so in your community, sorry, to this straight. is just fascinating me. In your community, are they thinking that there's a different way we should be sleeping? Like, are the beds we're using and all that all these years? Is there any talk about, you know, because there's all kinds of new beds, new pillows that come out all the time. And you're saying that even the way you lay down and sleep at night could be causing problems and that could come from your orthodontic history correct uh vice Other versa, way around. Vice versa. Vice versa. okay you're sleeping that way because of your wow. or, actually orthopedic orthopedic so wow. the difference between orthopedics and orthodontics and we make a distinction between that not to be academic about it but right. is orthopedics is we're growing bone orthopedics we're, orthodontics we're moving teeth okay so in in our arena I leave orthodontics to the orthodontist. And what I tell the patient is that this is orthopedics. Okay. We're going to move bone. The teeth will move along with it. And, and very often we get a very nice result from that, but I will not guarantee that. And I also use an orthodontist. I have two orthodontists that I use. And I just finished treatment with one gal. She's 13 years old. And I referred her to our ortho orthodontist. And we will work uh, hand in glove with this patient. Nice. Uh, I, I don't want to pretend to even think that I can do orthodontics as well as a seasoned orthodontist can. Mm. So orthopedics. Learning lots. Yes. Okay, so back to your grandson the with the duck oh, butt so, sleeping. <laughs> so little, little Wyatt, uh, the great little guy, 
end, of course. And so this is the appliance that we use for him. And that's pretty tiny. In fact, the one that we used for him was actually even small. I use this because it's easy. Oop. Oh, nice yes. <laughs> on I, camera I was going to say <laughs> un, under <laughs> pressure <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> too much fun and so uh, we fitted him with one of these before we did it uh, we did what we call a pharyngometer check and a pharyngometer is a machine that measures airflow and you put the little device in the mouth and the patient Oh, like the little tubes they use for asthma. Sort of only nope. different. Okay. And and then this is hooked up to a computer, so we get a computer mm -hmm. reading of of airflow from here all the way down here. That's fascinating. So to see a little year and a half old doing this wow. was hilarious. <laughs> they, they probably thought it was a, a fun thing. <laughs> I, he did it. I I I wouldn't want to try it for every little kid that age. So we fit him with one of these appliances. He's doing great right now. He's five years old now. He sleeps well. He's not having a problem. His arch is widened. Um, Do they stay in really well? They, it's a habit. Little kids adapt to this much better mm -hmm. than adults. But you oh. wear them at night and as much as possible during the day. But it's not a permanent thing. It's not like right. you stick it in there and then it's there for months. So it's... Uh, and, uh, and the way that my son got... To, Little Wyatt is that when they wanted to watch TV, you oh. have to have the appliance in first. Wow, equitable, equ equitable trade. trade. Yeah. <laughs> I'll wear it, Dad. Awesome. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. cool. Yes. So the other appliances that we use, this this one graduates. Uh, we may go, depending on the age of the child, we may go through two or three of these. Uh, we watch, we monitor these kids very closely. And You said every month you see them, right? Uh, ostensibly for some of it with, for these kids, we may go, sometimes we can go two months depending mm -hmm. on their, their growth and development uh, and their compliance. Compliance is, is huge. Mm -hmm. And so then when we achieve a certain point, <clears throat> then we will, uh, this move to this appliance. This is if we need to, uh, this is called the DNA appliance. At a certain juncture, these appliances, probably about 12 years old, we have reached the maximum of what this appliance will do. Sometimes we'll go as far as 13, but rarely beyond that. Is that because the growth has kind of slowed down so much by then, or is there another reason? Uh, this this appliance is more specific. Okay. So now we have uh, adult dentition. Uh, this one has either mixed dentition or what we call primary or the baby teeth. Uh, now we have full adult dentition. So we moved to the, we call this a DNA appliance. This is a removable appliance, optimally worn uh, 16 hours a day. Um, I could sleep 16 hours a day. I know, right? <laughs> this may be ideal it's, for you. It's, <laughs> I don't think it's the same thing, babe. <laughs> and so this, uh, at nighttime, definitely needs to be worn at night. Night is when the growth and development takes place. And, but it also needs to be worn uh, during the day to pick up those 16 hours. Okay. Uh, what'll happen with this appliance different than orthodontic appliances is this appliance doesn't hurt. Mm. Huh. Uh, we Yay. expand. It's the best. Big point. Best. No, if we have pain, then we have to back off. We're, this is not the way this appliance works. We put the appliance in, it's in there 16 hours. These little springs right here, if you can see them, uh, will vibrate at a high vibration rate as a special metal. And when those vibrate on the front teeth, it stimulates the stem cells down around the roots of the teeth. And when those stem cells are stimulated, it wakes up the what we call osteoblasts, and that's what grows the bone. Lots now of words. Awesome. And wow. this is even for adults, right? This is this isn't just for kids that are growing. We use this, we've used this successfully with an 80-year-old adult. Wow. And he was able to discard his CPAP machine. So if it's awesome. so that so evidently that's how Betty White has lived till yeah. 99 <laughs> years old. <laughs> she probably is seeing someone like you. <laughs> Crazy. If it's stimulating the stem cells, do you find that the gums? Quit receding and 
come back more naturally? Does it affect other things? I, I, I think that it's independent of gum recession. Those are two different functions. It doesn't tend to make the gums develop a little bit more, whereas they've been receded. Uh, just, I'm just thinking I, stem the, cells kind of do a lot with everything. Potentially they could, but our finding is, and that's that's a good point and accurate for this. The stimulation here, because it's on the teeth, mm -hmm. stimulates the bone to grow. The re re regeneration of gum tissue. We don't. Um, uh, at least to my knowledge, I haven't seen evidence right. of that. Okay, happening. I was just curious because no, I'm thinking hey, actually, it's the next field of research. And, I, <laughs> and actually, I had the exact same question. Did you? Because yeah, my my dentist says my gums are receding, and I was just curious because you're talking about making bone grow. So how do you make gums yeah. grow? Let's do it, guys. It's yeah, a, it, it, it's a it's it's a it's an excellent question. Uh, there's probably some money out there that has <laughs> a better answer than I do. All right. There's your money maker. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so gum recession is generally caused from uh, uh, clenching, grinding, bruxing. Can I hold sure. this? Is your that all right? Turn. I just want to oh. look at it closer. That's crazy looking. So what it does is that when this wearing this, so let's let's create some thumbnail timeline and dimensions. If we're wearing this 16 hours a day, at the end of one week, ostensibly, we can, this will get loose. And we have a little key that goes, there's two, there's two screws in there. One, for this, this split here, and the other one for this split here. So one will move this unit this way, one will move this unit this way. Hmm. And at the end of one week, with 16 hours of um, of wear, we can expand that screw. We have to put a little key in there and crank it this way and crank this one that way. This will expand one quarter of a millimeter. Hmm. So theoretically, every week, worn 16 hours a day, we can expand this a quarter of a millimeter. Wow. How do you know when you're done? Um, Your teeth fall out. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> Sorry. So, <laughs> the, such a smart that's a very, You're breathing. That's a very good <laughs> You're breathing normal. Uh, right? So we, so what's our goal? That So we start out, we say, okay. person comes in, I'm not sleeping well, et cetera. What is your goal? At the end of six months, we reassess, we take new records, et cetera. We assess where are we now? Mm -hmm. At the end of 12 months, we do a total reassessment and find out where we where we are. Um, have we achieved the breathing and sleeping that we wanted to achieve? And and mm -hmm. other issues, maybe it had headaches, neck aches, back aches, etc. Have we achieved that? And sometimes there's a tooth alignment. Have we achieved a form of the arch that's appealing for the patient? And it sets us up for a good orthodontic result. Right. Um, and then if we have, then that's the end point. So another question is, well, if you keep expanding and keep putting new appliances in and expanding mm -hmm. the screw, would you get a jaw that's like a Ubangi? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the answer is no, because it will only expand as far as the genetic code. Okay. And at some point. I'll just stop. It, it'll quit stop it'll stop huh. it'll yeah. stay tight and won't get loose interesting anymore. Huh. okay i think that is actually a perfect breaking point so we are gonna take a pause there and um this has been wonderful i truly hope that you guys will tune in for mm -hmm. the next segment uh the next piece of this podcast because we have all the things coming up that we promised you and i'm going to recap those here for you we are gonna talk about why you should rethink traditional orthodontics for your kids. Really, really great topic. Um, we're gonna talk about how these appliances can help your labor. Really exciting, right? And we're gonna to touch on um, what Shannon said, the hot topic of why you might wanna rethink putting a mask on your kiddo. All right. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Dr. Stevens. Oh, you're and we will see you guys back for the next podcast. See you later. Bye. Thank you.
Well, thanks for joining us for more about birth. That's part one here in Sunnyside. We hope you will join us for part two. We'll see you then. This podcast is intended for educational purposes only. For more information and our full disclosure, please visit ncmidwifery.com and our podcast page.